If you're a manufacturer, a pilot, or a professional working in the drone space, and you want some assistance with either motor design or motor testing, then please don't hesitate to reach out to me, chris at aosrc.com. Hi there everyone, and welcome back to the channel. It's been a little while, but it's time to get back into motor testing. And today we are gonna be testing a bunch of different 2810 and 2812 motors designed for nine inch props from the likes of Dolphin RC, Emacs, Lumineer, Brother Hobby, X Nova and T Motor to see which are going to be the best for larger long range or cinematic FPV drones. Those of you who've watched previous motor testing videos will know that up until now I've been using the Taito Robotics 1585 thrust test stand for all of my motor testing. And this test stand is capable up to 5 kilos of thrust and 50 amps of current draw from the motor. And for these larger 2812 and 2810 motors, that 50 amps of current draw is pretty limiting. And that's why up until now, I haven't been able to test these larger motors. But don't worry, because for today's testing, we are gonna be using my brand new Flightstand 15 Pro from Taito Robotics. This is an absolute beast of a thrust test stand, capable of measuring up to 180 volts, 150 amps of current, props up to 24 inches in diameter with maximum thrusts approaching 15 kilos and it can do all of that at update rates of a thousand hertz which is five times as fast as I could get out of my 1585. This thing laughs in the face of the biggest and most powerful motors we could ever conceive of fitting to an FPV drone. It is the definition of overkill and I cannot wait to use it to get this data. Let's not waste any more time, let's dive right into it. As always, I'm gonna take you through the motors on test, then we're gonna look at the test method on the new flight test stand, and then dive straight into the results. So let me take you on a whistle-stop tour of the motors we're gonna be testing today. We've got a couple from Brother Hobby, these are the Avenger V3s. We've got the 2812 in 1115 kV, and the 2810 in 1180 kV. From Dolphin RC, we have their 2810 and 2812, both 1100 kV. And from Lumineer, we have the Zip V2 in 1150 kV and 1300 kV, both in the 2812 size. So it'll be interesting to see how the higher kV version performs. From T-Motor, we have the Velox 2812, 1155 kV, and the F1000, 1100 kV, which is a 2810 in size. From Emacs, we have the Emacs Eco 2 2812 in 1100 kV. And we also have the Emacs RS Pro, in 2812 and that's 1100 kV as well. We also have the Pro in 2810 size and that is 1180 kV. Finally, we have from Xnova, the Xnova 2812 1100 kV and that's from their FS line, which is the Freestyle Smooth. We're gonna put all of these motors through their paces with four different tests. The first is a KV test where we drive the motor full throttle at 10 volts and measure the RPM so that we can determine the KV in RPM per volt. Then we're gonna do a prop test with this HQ 9x4x3 prop. And we're gonna do a prop ramp from zero to 100% throttle to see how much thrust the motor is able to generate when it's being driven at 24 volts from a 6S 6,000 milliamp hour battery. Then we're gonna do a responsiveness test, again with the same prop, we're going to accelerate the prop from 10 to 50% throttle and back again 10 times and measure how quickly the motor is able to accelerate and decelerate the prop. Responsiveness is really important for the stability of the quad in the air, so this is a great way to test that. And finally, we're gonna put a 200 kilogram millimeter squared flywheel on the motor, and then we're gonna do another step test from 10 to 50% throttle, and we're gonna measure how quickly the motor can accelerate a flywheel from 10 to 50% throttle, and how much torque it can generate from about 2000 to 10,000 RPM. Taking the results of all of these tests together, along with the motor weight, should be able to give us a really good ranking of the quality of these motors and the performance that they're able to deliver. Let's start by looking at the results of the KV test. And we have the measured KV in orange in RPM per volt, and we have the rated KV in blue. We've ordered the motors from lowest measured KV up to highest measured KV. And as we would expect, the Lumineer Zip V2 1300 KV comes out with the highest KV. But it's quite interesting down the bottom end of the chart that we have a number of motors that are measuring much, much lower than their ratings. The Xnova 2812, rated at 1100 kV, is measuring out at less than 1000 kV, and the T-Motor F1000 1100 kV is measuring out just right around 1000 kV, and that's a big discrepancy, it's about 10% or so. The Brother Hobby Avenger, also measuring out significantly lower than its rating. 
but most of the other motors are pretty close to their ratings and it's good when comparing motors always to look at their measured kV because as you can see there can sometimes be a big difference between the measured kV and the rated kV. It remains to be seen whether some of these big discrepancies, particularly on the lower side of kV, are going to have an impact when it comes to the other performance parameters of the motor. Now let's look at the thrust versus throttle curve. And here we're ramping the throttle from 10 to 100% over about 10 seconds. And you can see that we have a big spread in thrust delivered. Although pretty much all of the motors have a very similar shape to the thrust versus throttle curve. So they all are going to have a similar throttle feel. And the one standout is the Lumineer Zip V2 1300 kV. This is, as we would expect for a motor with a significantly higher kV, it's generating more RPMs and more thrust, particularly in that mid throttle region. But at higher throttle, you can see that the improvement, the increase that it has over the other motors on test starts to reduce. And that's very typical for motors that have slightly too high a kV for the prop that you're trying to drive they start to run out of mechanical torque and start to lose efficiency at high throttle settings and that means that the advantage they have over the lower kV motor starts to fall away. Although here we can see that the, the 1300 kV still maintains an advantage all the way to 100% throttle so it's only slightly too high in terms of kV. In terms of the other motors we see a pretty big spread so let's have a look at the maximum thrust. If we look now at the maximum thrust that these motors were able to produce the broad brush strokes are that the smaller 2810 size motors come sort of towards the lower end of the ratings and the larger 2812 motors are able to produce more thrust as we would expect. The Lumineer Zip V2 1300 kV, that higher kV allows it to edge ahead in terms of maximum thrust and power, although it is doing that with a bit of a loss of efficiency as we'll see later. The Emax Eco 2 2812 is doing really well in terms of maximum thrust along with the Velox 2812 as well. The Exnova 2812 is actually doing quite poorly in terms of maximum thrust and I think this is due to the lower kV that it actually has compared to its rating. It would be doing a lot lot better if it had a true kV closer to its 1100 kV rating but it has under 1000 kV when I measured it and that's obviously going to limit the maximum thrust. In terms of the 2810s, the Emax Pro is doing really well, delivering lots of maximum thrust considering that it's a slightly smaller 2810 size motor. And if we go down the bottom, the Brother Hobby Avenger 2812 is really struggling here. Despite being a larger motor, it's, it's really in the middle of the pack of the 2810 size motors in terms of the maximum thrust that it's able to deliver. So it's quite a big range of performance that we're seeing in terms of maximum thrust across all of these motors. Now let's take a look at motor efficiency measured during that prop ramp. And here we're looking at electrical power versus thrust. So motors that can produce more thrust with less power are more efficient and motors that produce less thrust with more power are less efficient. We can see that the Lumineer Zip V2 1300 kV, that kV again just a little bit too high for the prop it's trying to spin, that hurts its efficiency. And although it draws a lot of power and produces a lot of thrust, it's not tremendously efficient. If we look at the Emax Eco 2 and Emax Pro series, the 2812s are doing really, really well in terms of their efficiency. And we're also seeing great efficiency from the Dolphin 2812 and the Exnova 2812 as well, although they're not producing as much maximum thrust as the motors from uh, Emax. So that's something to bear in mind. An easy way to compare efficiency is to look at the efficiency of the motors at a particular power level. Let's take 600 watts, for example. And you can see here that we get a big spread in motor efficiency from anywhere from about 72.5% all the way up to nearly 82%. And as you see, the Exnova 2812-1100 kV is the standout winner here in terms of efficiency. That lower kV hurts it in terms of maximum thrust, but helps it in terms of its efficiency. And so that's the trade-off that we see. The Emax Eco 2 is also doing really well in terms of efficiency. Not quite to the Exnova's level, but the fact that it's getting over 80% efficiency while also being one of the most um, powerful motors that I measured is really impressive. Down the bottom end, again, we've got the Brother Hobby Avenger 2810 really struggling, um, as is the Lumineer Zip V2 1300, again, just that slightly higher KV. The Lumineer Zip V2 with a lower 1150 KV is doing much, much better in terms of efficiency, and so that KV is much better matched to the prop that it's trying to spin. Again, you can see a big variation. So if you're looking for a motor that's more efficient, you're definitely going to be want to, wanting to pick one that's at the top of this list. 
And if you're um, more focused on power or responsiveness, then you're probably going to be selecting on other criteria. The next test to look at is motor acceleration and deceleration. So as you'll remember, we're stepping the prop from 10 to 50% throttle and back again and looking at how fast the motor can accelerate and decelerate the prop. The faster the motor can accelerate and decelerate the prop, the more responsive the motor is and the more stable the quad is going to be in the air and the better it's going to be able to adapt to turbulence or wind or um, sudden stick inputs, that sort of thing, because it's going to be able to change motor RPM and therefore thrust very, very quickly. The standout performer is the Xnova 2812. It comes at the top of this list. It is the fastest to accelerate and the fastest to decelerate. Just behind it is the Emax Pro 2812 and the Emax Eco 2 2812, both of which are also doing really, really well. The T-Motor is also doing fine, but as you can see, we're starting to move down the list in terms of responsiveness. It's also interesting to see here that we have a very monotonic response. Motors that accelerate faster also brake faster. And so this is very indicative of the magnetic design of the motor and the amount of mechanical torque that it has. The smaller motors, as we would expect, struggle with acceleration and deceleration. They have less torque because they're a smaller motor. And the Brother Hobby Avenger is particularly struggling in this case with quite a, a slow acceleration and deceleration compared even to the other 2810 size motors. The Emax Pro 2810 is doing the best in terms of all of the 2810 size motors. And actually the Emax Pro in general is a very responsive motor in all the sizes. The final test I want to show you is the flywheel acceleration test. Here we are accelerating a flywheel from about 2,500 to 10,000 RPM as quickly as possible by stepping from 10 to 50% throttle on the motor. And this is a good measure for how much maximum mechanical torque the motor can generate when it's spinning up an inertial load. And this gives you a great idea of how much flux the motor is able to generate in the air gap and therefore what the sort of peak torque performance of the motor is like. The Xnova 2812 is coming out top of this test, generating over 0.5 newton meters of torque in that acceleration. And you can see that it's able to generate a lot of torque at low RPMs, but then because it's got a low KV, that torque falls off rapidly at higher RPMs. Compare that to something like the Lumineer Zip V2, which is able to maintain a higher torque level up to much higher RPMs. That's just down to the fact that it's wound with a much higher KV. You can see that overall there's a big range in peak torque and that indicates a big range in the sort of magnetic performance of the rotor design. And this is something where um, if you have a magnetically optimized design, you can look to really improve the, the efficiency and the acceleration of the motor, both with a flywheel and also with a prop. So again, this may be less relevant if you're only ever going to use the prop with a motor, but it's good to see the performance as kind of a, a proxy for the quality of the magnetic design that's gone into the motor. When we're calculating the scores for these motor tests, I always take into account the motor mass because it's easy to make a motor that performs better by making it heavier. And we can see that the Xnova 2812 and the Dolphin 2812 are the heaviest motors and the 2810 size motors are all significantly lighter weight than most of the 2812s, with the exception being the Lumineer Zip V2 2812, which actually comes in very light for its size. So obviously taking into account the motor mass is important when calculating the scores. There's no use having a motor that performs really good if it weighs a ton, because that is gonna have a negative impact on the performance of the drone as well. Now it's time to look at the summary scores for all of the tests. And I calculate these scores by taking the performance of each motor on a particular test and dividing by the average performance of all the motors tested on that spec point. That means that an average motor is going to get a score of 100%, a motor that's 10% better than average, a score of 110, and a motor that's 10% worse than average, a score of 90. We do that for all the different tests, and then I take the total score as the average of all of the scores, not taking into account the weight of the motor. And then the weight normalized score takes into account the weight of the motor as well. These um, motors are ordered in terms of weight normalized score. So you can see that the Emax Pro 2810 actually comes out the best overall when you take into account the weight of the motor. Then it's the Lumineer Zip V2 2812 1300 kV, um, which does really well in terms of maximum thrust. It's quite a lightweight motor, but it loses out on efficiency. The Emax Pro does really well across the board. It is a little bit of a heavier motor and it didn't come top in any of the tests, but performed near the top for all of them, which is really good for an all round choice. 
The Emacs Eco 2, really a great budget option because it's performing really well. It came in fourth despite being the cheapest motor that I tested. So if you're looking for value, that's a great place to start. The Brother Hobby Avenger 2810, I mean, it's a very lightweight motor and that helps it in terms of weight normalized score. But as you can see, its overall performance is uh, not particularly impressive. The Xnova 2812 did really well on several metrics. It was really let down on its maximum thrust and it is a heavy motor and that pushes it down the list in terms of weight normalized score. If you're focused on efficiency and maybe you're looking to drive a prop that's even a bit larger than a nine inch prop, maybe a, a 9.5 or a 10 inch prop, that could be a really, really good choice because it's got the torque to handle that larger prop and the lower KV helps keep the current draw under control when you heavily load the motor. The T-Motor F1000, now we're into sort of the lower half of the group that I tested. Um, it's a lightweight motor, but it's only got kind of moderate performance, and so it doesn't come particularly high up on the scores. The Lumineer Zip V2 2812-1150, a great all-rounder. It's not let down in any area. It's a lightweight 2812 motor, and so it could be a pretty good choice if you're looking for just an all-around lightweight motor. Um, it's not the best performer on any of the particular tests. And obviously with the likes of the Emacs series, it's got some stiff competition. The Dolphin 2810, um, I think, yeah, very consistent performance, but obviously it's a smaller motor, it's a lighter motor, and the performance kind of follows the weight. The T-Motor Velox 2812 um, really struggled in terms of the maximum torque that it was able to generate. And I did retest the motor because that seemed uh, an unusual result. But overall, that torque score really letting it down. If you're not too worried about the peak torque that the motor can deliver at low RPMs, you're only ever going to be using it on a relatively light pitch prop, then um, it could still be a good choice. And it's among the best performers in, in some of the other categories. So it's worth considering. The Brother Hobby Avenger 2812 1115. Um, not not a very impressive motor in terms of of any of the performance that it delivered i think it's an older design and that means that it struggles a bit more definitely the magnetic performance could be improved with a bit of a redesign of the rotor and the dolphin 2812 1100 kv it performs well in some tests not so well in others it's very heavy and that hurts its weight normalized score and that's why it's at the bottom if you're not concerned about weight then the performance is okay I and mean, if price and availability are okay and you don't care about weight it could still be an okay choice. But if if you are concerned about weight, it's very heavy for um, the size and the performance that it gives. The one thing that I would mention about the Emacs and T-Motors is that they all have multi-core windings. This means that they're taking multiple thin strands of wire and winding them around the stator. And they're doing that in parallel. So they're using two or three strands of thin wire in place of one thick strand of wire. If you compare that to the X Nova motors, you can see that they use single core windings. So there is just a single solid piece of wire, not multiple thin wires in parallel. In my experience, these multi-core windings are much, much more prone to overheat and much, much more prone to smoke than these single core windings. They have thinner insulation and it's much more difficult for heat to get out. So I would say that if you are gonna drive the motor very hard and you're worried that the motor is gonna get quite hot during use because you're using it on a heavy quad, then definitely pick something with these thick single core windings. The motor will stay a lot cooler and it's much less likely to smoke when you put it under heavy load. I hope this motor testing helps drive you in the right direction if you're trying to choose a motor for your next lifter or long range quad. If you're looking to get hold of the full raw data, so not just the charts I've shown in this video, but the raw outputs from the test stand, then that's available for my Patreons, and uh, you can find a link to that down in the video description. That's all I have for you for today, so until next time, I wish you all very, very happy flying.